Welcome again to the next part of our lecture of IS-16 property plan and equipment. And in this video, we are considering timing of revaluation and its effect on depreciation charge. The revaluation can be done at the start of the year, at the end of the year, or midway through the year. So this is again an example of uh, revaluation at the start of the year. The cost of plant on 1st January 2005 is 48,000, useful life is 12 year and already charged depreciation by 1st January 2005 was 16,000. The, the company decided to revalue its lease plant, there is need of uh, correction of this date that is 1st January 2005. This is the date of revaluation of asset. The director accepted the report of an independent surveyor who valued the plant at 36,000 on that date. The company has not yet recorded revaluation. The remaining life of the plant is 8 years at the date of revaluation, means on 1st January 2005. The company makes an annual transfer to retain earnings to reflect the realization of revaluation surplus. Show the accounting for revaluation. So, first we need to record the entry for revaluation. In the first step, we have to restate the value of asset to its fair value from 48,000 to 36,000. The value of asset has decreased, plant has decreased by 12,000. Second, we need to remove the accumulated depreciation, and accumulated depreciation is given as per question is 16,000. So, it create a revaluation surplus of 4000. Remember, this revaluation surplus is a difference of carrying value and fair value. The fair value of asset is 36000, while the cost of asset is 48000, already charged depreciation is 16000. So, difference of these two figures, carrying value of asset is 32000. As fair value is greater than the carrying value, difference is said to be recorded in the name of revaluation surplus. So this would be the entry of revaluation. After revaluation, we need to calculate the depreciation charge and depreciation charge would be after revaluation, the depreciation charge by the end of the year on 31st December 2000x5. Entry to pass depreciation is depreciation to accumulated depreciation. Value of depreciation can be calculated as revalued amount 36,000 divided by remaining life 8 years. So it would be 4,500. So now you need to consider what is the depreciation charge before that revaluation. Before revaluation, the actual cost of plant is 48,000 and useful life is 12 years. So the actual depreciation charge would be 48 divided by 12 and that is 4,000, right? In this way, you can compare the depreciation charge before revaluation that is 4,000 and after revaluation that is 4,500. So the excess depreciation is 500 and that would be recorded by passing entry debit revaluation surplus 500 and credit retained earning 500. This could also be calculated by using a formula. The excess depreciation can also be calculated by using formula and formula is revaluation surplus which was 4000 divided by remaining life which is 8 year and it will give you the same amount of 500. So the excess depreciation is recorded by passing entry revaluation surplus to retain earning. So this is the case of revaluation that is done at the start of the year. Then in the next question we are considering that revaluation is done at the end of the year. In the books of Dexon, PLC cost of land and building on 1st January 2005 land element is 20,000 and it means the building element is 1,65,000. 
The non-current asset have not been depreciated for the year ended 31st December 2005. Dexin PLC has a policy of revaluing its land and building at the end of each accounting year. The values in the above statement of financial position are as at 1st January 2005. When the building had a remaining life of 15 years. A qualified surveyor has valued the land and building at 31st December means at the year end date at 180 million. Show accounting for revaluation. The only point you need to remember is that by the date of revaluation, you need to charge depreciation as per previous estimates. Which means in this question, the building element is the value of building is 185,000 minus 20,000 is equal to 165,000. And this is the value on 1st January 2005. You need to charge depreciation by the date it has been revalued on 31st December 2005. So the depreciation for the year 2005 would be cost of building is 165,000 and the remaining life at that date is 15 years. That means a depreciation charge of $11,000. So while recording depreciation uh, revaluation entry, first you need to restate the asset to its fair value. The land and building has a combined amount of 185,000 and now it has revalued to 180,000. If you treat it combined, then in that case, the value of land and building has decreased by 5,000. From 185,000 to 80. But the depreciation charge till the date of revaluation depreciation charge is 11,000 in this current year as the company has a policy of revaluing its land and building at the end of each counting year which means that this is the depreciation charge to be eliminated 11,000 so accumulated depreciation would be debited by 11,000 and difference of these two figure would be credited to revaluation surplus 6000. Again, we can calculate the revaluation surplus by comparing the carrying value and fair value. Here, fair value is 180,000 and carrying value is 185,000 combined cost of uh, land and building minus depreciation of 11,000 gives you a carrying value of 174,000. Comparison of these two figures show a difference of 6000 and as the fair value of asset is greater than carrying value, the difference would be recorded in the name of revaluation surplus. Now it is about the midway through the year and the depreciation charge in this case should be carefully done. Midway through the year. Auckland company purchased a machine for 60,000 on 1st January 2007 and assigned it a useful life of 15 years. This is a useful life of 15 years. Assign it a useful life of 15 years on 31st March 2009 means after a year of after 2 years and 3 months. On 31st March 2009 means from 1st January 2007 to 31st March 2009 after 2 years and 3 months it was revalued to 64,000 with no change in useful life. This is a question from BPV kit. What will be the depreciation charge in relation to this machine in the financial statement of Auckland for the year being ended on 31st December 2009? So we need to consider the depreciation charge before the date of revaluation 31st March 2009 and after the date of revaluation 31st March 2009 to 31st December. So before revaluation the period is. So we need to charge depreciation from 1st January 2009 
2009 to 31st March 2009 before revaluation and after revaluation from 31st March 2009 to 31st December 2009 this is the period after revaluation so depreciation charge before revaluation the calculation of such depreciation is easy uh, you just need to consider the original value that is 60,000 divided by useful life 15 years multiplied by 3 divided by 12 this is the depreciation charge of 1000 but to charge depreciation for the next 9 months period we need to consider a little detail first the revalued amount is 64000 and you have to consider carefully what is the remaining life as the total life of asset is 15 years and the first revaluation is recorded on 31st March 2009 means after a period of 2 years and 3 months so if we deduct 2 years and 3 months period from the total life of asset remaining life would be 12 years and 9 months so this will be the remaining life of the asset right and this could be recorded as 12.75 how it is 75 because 12 is the year plus 9 months out of 12 months gives you a proportion of 0.75 so the remaining life would be 12.75 years so this 12.75 years when divided by 64,000 divided by 12.75 give you a depreciation charge of 12.75 5019 but this is a depreciation for the whole year and we need, we need to calculate a depreciation for the 9 months period so the depreciation for 9 months period would be 3765 so total depreciation would be 1000 for the first 3 months plus 3765 for last 9 months total 4765 this is the depreciation charge another way to calculate the depreciation is that you can calculate it as 64000 after revaluation depreciation 64000 divided by remaining life in months Remaining life in months is uh, 12 years, 144 months plus 9, 153 months. In this way, you will calculate a depreciation charge per month and then you need to multiply this by 9. This is the per month depreciation and when multiplied by 9, it will give you a depreciation charge for 9 months period that is again 3,764. It's up to you whether to use yearly base or whether to use monthly base. So these are the questions in this regard where we have to calculate the depreciation for the part of the year before revaluation in accordance with previous revaluation or original cost and after revaluation in accordance with new revaluation. So this is again the question uh, ABL Limited side office is in the city center. Property was acquired on 1st April 2013, estimated life 25 years with no residual value. Company has a policy of carrying its land and building at current value, means fair value. However, recently property rises had not charged change for some years. On 1st October 2015 means after a period of two and a half years, means again the revaluation is done at the mid of the year. So you need to calculate depreciation for the six months before revaluation in accordance with old methods old estimated life and six months after revaluation in accordance with new value remember that land is not depreciated so if you have to 
charge depreciation for building for the first six months it will be original cost 12 lakh and original life 22 years 25 years multiply by 6 by 12 and this will give you a depreciation charge for first six months and that is 24,000 and after revaluation the revalued amount of building is 13 lakh 50,000 but the remaining life is 22.5 years because two and a half year period has been elapsed so in accordance with this your depreciation charge after revaluation would be 13 lakh 50,000 divided by 22.5 remaining useful life multiplied by 6 divided by 12 6 months depreciation after revaluation is 30,000 so that is how depreciation charge would be calculated and now last about the disposal of revalued asset when a non-current asset that has been revalued is eventually disposed of there is a gain or loss on the disposal how to calculate the gain you have to compare the net disposal proceed with a net book value if the net disposal proceed is greater than the book value then this is a gain and in other case if the net disposal proceed is less than net book value it is a situation of loss for example an entity purchased property of 6 million on 1st july 2003 land element was 1 million the expected life of building was 50 years and its residual value is nil so entity purchased property for 6 million date ha date is 1st july 2003 land element is 1 million and it means the depreciation to be charged on building is for of 5 million value the remaining life is 50 years, the total life is 50 years, residual value is nil. On 30th June 2005, after a period of two and a half years, the property was revalued to 7 million. Of which the land element was 1.24 million, it means the building element is 5.76 million. On 30th June 2007, exactly after a period of two years, the property was sold for 6.8 million. And we need to consider whether we have sustained a loss or an, a profit on such disposal. So we need to consider the disposal proceed is given to us as 6.8 million. We need to consider what is the net book value of asset. At last revaluation on 30th June 2005, on 30th June 2005, the building element is of 5.76 million. And remaining life at that date would be 48 years how 48 years because on 1st July 2003 the total life is 50 years after a period of two years the remaining life is 48 years so the depreciation charge of one year would be 0.12 million so 0.12 million is the depreciation charge for one year from the date of last revaluation on 30 June 2005 to the date of disposal 30 June 2007, this is the period of two years that has been elapsed. And in this two years period, the total depreciation charge is 0.24 million. So the property has total value of 7 million on the date of revaluation. After the date of revaluation and uh, till the date of disposal, the depreciation charge is 0.24 million. So the value of asset is 6.76 million. If the value of 6.76 million of asset has been sold for, this is said to be net book value, 6.76 million, and the sale proceed is 6.8 million. As the sale proceed is greater than book value, difference is said to be your gain. And that is of point zero four million, or you can say forty thousand dollars. This is the gain on the sale of revalued asset. So that is about no. Uh, last point the treatment of revaluation surplus on disposal of asset 
if you are disposing of any asset the all the revaluation surplus related to that asset should be transferred to retain earning by passing the same entry revaluation surplus debit and retain earning credit so that is all about is 16 property plan and equipment do give your feedback in this regard thank you